Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I'm very glad to see uh, uh, friends uh, here, uh, uh, people from the uh, Hungarian Academy of Sciences, uh, um, uh, and uh, also uh, guests from abroad, uh, from Indonesia. Uh, I'm having a PhD student at ERTE, also from Indonesia. Uh, so it seems to me that uh, it's really uh, an international uh, sort of audience. Um, uh, I was uh, requested to talk about uh, the uh, position uh, of uh, the European Union or Europe in general uh, in uh, the United States uh, global strategy. And uh, uh, I'd like to, to discuss uh, uh, these issues uh, in terms of uh, you know, geo strategy, geopolitics, uh, uh, geoeconomics, uh, and also uh, would like to uh, pay attention to the so called strategic triangles. Uh, that is uh, the uh, US, EU, China, uh, US, EU, Russia, uh, and, uh, and how all of these issues uh, uh, are influencing uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, shaping the uh, transatlantic relationship or uh, Europe's position in the uh, global thinking of the American strategist. I'd like to start with uh, uh, a, a statement which is uh, not very new, uh, and, uh, and the statement is that uh, despite all the problems and despite all the, uh, all the uh, uh, books and studies on, uh, on the decline of the US and the Atlantic world, uh, it's uh, a, a sort of a cottage industry uh, right now. And uh, this cottage industry usually uh, reminds me of Mark Twain's uh, uh, short story, or at least one of them, uh, which was written under the title of uh, uh, the reports of my death. Uh, I had highly exaggerated. So I guess that uh, the reports of uh, the terminal decline uh, of the US and the Atlantic world is a little bit exaggerated, uh, but, uh, but uh, it is a fact that, uh, at least relatively speaking, uh, the Atlantic community is not, a trust, uh, not what it used to be uh, a few decades ago, uh, but still uh, the US-EU relationship uh, or European relationship remains uh, uh, the most integrated uh, and the most interdependent uh, uh, in terms of economic uh, uh, relations, in terms of financial relations, in terms of uh, uh, the military uh, cooperation, in terms of uh, culture, uh, interpreted in a broad sense. So I think that, uh, that still uh, we can talk uh, uh, a very, very strong transatlantic relations, despite the fact that uh, this uh, uh, this transatlantic relations uh, ship uh, started to change uh, uh, with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Um, the Soviet Union uh, uh, was uh, very important, uh, uh, just like uh, Russia at the moment uh, or China at the moment uh, uh, for uh, gluing uh, the uh, Europeans and the Americans together. Uh, I uh, read a, a very funny uh, fiction, uh, uh, science fiction, science fiction uh, in the 1970s. Uh, I think it was a French writer who has, uh, uh, who uh, started uh, this uh, short story uh, with uh, uh, the people uh, getting up, uh, switching on the radio. Uh, and uh, the first piece of news is that the Soviet Union had disappeared. Uh, and uh, everyone is awfully happy in London and Washington and Paris and uh, all the Western capitals, uh, uh, popping champagne and so on. Uh, and then the uh, next day when they uh, have the uh, morning after the night before, uh, they started to think uh, hard about the implications. Uh, uh, so the, all the criminologists start uh, laid off and, uh, and uh, a lot of strategists, military started to, uh, to be uh, dissolved and so on. So uh, long and short of the story is that, uh, uh, that all the Western countries uh, uh, simply joined hands and put money together to restore the Soviet Union. 
because uh, it was so nice to have uh, such a nice enemy uh, over there. So uh, with the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, this nice enemy disappeared, which, uh, uh, which pushed um, uh, the United States and uh, the Europeans together to a large extent. And uh, uh, there were a lot of expectations that the new world uh, uh, was born. Uh, George Bush's, I mean, the other uh, Bush's uh, uh, New World Order, uh, and of course, intellectually, uh, Francis Fukuyama's uh, 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 piece about uh, the end of history, uh, or uh, in terms of uh, realpolitik or politics, uh, Bill Clinton's uh, approach to politics uh, and uh, his famous slogan during 1992 uh, presidential election is the economy stupid. And uh, Clinton and the Democratic administration in the 1990s believed that it wasn't just uh, uh, economy at home, uh, but the geopolitics uh, had been replaced by geoeconomics in the world. So uh, it wouldn't be any more uh, geopolitics that would uh, define uh, international relations, but geoeconomics uh, would be the one uh, to, uh, to define international relations. And, uh, uh, and that was also uh, the idea of uh, uh, kind of a postmodern world. So the, the birth of a postmodern world. Uh, uh, just to bring in another name, uh, that is Robert Cooper, uh, who talked about uh, the postmodern, modern, and the pre-modern worlds uh, uh, existing side by side. So. Uh, the idea was that uh, the EU, like a postmodern political entity, uh, and the United States uh, also heading for some sort of postmodern uh, uh, direction. And so uh, the uh, the idea was that, uh, that the economics would be uh, uh, the, the the big game uh, uh, after uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union, and for a short period of time. It looked like uh, uh, a, a, a sensible proposition. Uh, Soviet Union had disappeared. China had not risen yet. Uh, so there was a short moment, uh, uh, a few years or so, uh, in which the US uh, or the West in general was still, uh, uh, or they, they together were uh, calling the shots in the world. Uh, and uh, the American. Uh, vision for Europe uh, started to be uh, realized. Uh, uh, once again, the Clintonian policy of engagement and enlargement, enlargement of the Atlantic community, uh, NATO expansion, uh, uh, trying to do away with uh, the security uh, gray zones and so on. So that was the situation in the 1990s. But at the same time, uh, the uh, world started to change. Uh, so uh, uh, if we talk about the economic, uh, 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 economic uh, uh, issues, uh, one of the basic changes was a shift, uh, uh, which again uh, has quite uh, uh, a large literature, uh, a shift uh, from uh, so-called west to east, uh, or from north to south. Now, which is, of course, simplification, and uh, we shouldn't take it uh, at face value. Uh, but uh, uh, I've got, uh, uh, if I can find uh, one or two uh, figures about uh, the shift uh, that uh, the uh, uh, Atlantic Committee in 1991 uh, produced uh, about 40% of the global GDP. Uh, 20 years later, it's about a third. Uh, uh, so the relative decline is still very nice, but uh, uh, it's not, you know, forty uh, percent. Uh, Why, at the same time, uh, uh, an emerging uh, group of uh, of uh, relatively big countries, uh, the BRIC countries, uh, 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 that is Brazil, Russia, India, and China, uh, uh, produced uh, uh, in 1991 uh, less than 20 percent, and uh, uh, in uh, two decades uh, about as much as uh, the Atlantic community, so uh, one third. So. Basically, uh, you had uh, uh, an absolute growth uh, uh, in the so-called uh, developing countries, uh, especially China and India. Uh, and on the other hand, there was a relative decline 
uh, of the Atlantic community. Uh, so uh, this economic shift uh, uh, started to, uh, to define uh, to a large extent the relationship between uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, United States and, uh, and Europe as well. Uh, now, the, uh, uh, the major uh, challenge was, of course, uh, and is, of course, uh, posed by uh, China at the moment. And, uh, and the Chinese uh, attempt uh, to pursue this uh, uh, one belt, one road, now, uh, or a politically more correct version, uh, of the Belt and Road Initiative. Uh, uh, that is, uh, uh, China, for various reasons, uh, has accumulated a huge amount of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, exchange reserves, uh, and uh, China is uh, 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 is investing uh, some of this money uh, into uh, uh, creating a network of uh, economic outposts, uh, uh, purchasing uh, 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 mines and uh, seaports, uh, uh, in uh, uh, financing. Uh, investment into railroads uh, and so on. So basically, uh, China would like to uh, uh, to replace, uh, at least uh, if we can uh, believe what uh, Xi Jinping, uh, the Chinese uh, leader, is saying, uh, that uh, by 2050, uh, uh, at uh, at the latest, uh, it would like to replace the United States as uh, a number one country in the world. Um, in fact. Uh, uh, that's roughly the period when Hillary Clinton's uh, 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 grand uh, uh, children uh, uh, would be uh, adults. And Hillary Clinton at one point said that he didn't want to live in a world in which uh, 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 her grandchildren uh, uh, were members of a world uh, in which China is number one. Um, so uh, possibly, but. Uh, uh, but uh, there's uh, there's one thing what what we should take into take into account. Uh, uh, the current trends uh, uh, are simply projected into the future, uh, and the current trends uh, previously the two-digit uh, uh, Chinese growth uh, uh, and so on have been projected into the uh, future, uh, and that is how you can. Uh, arrive at uh, all of these figures. Now, I'm a little bit, a little bit skeptical about all of these uh, projections. Um, and uh, I, I remember the uh, uh, the Club of Rome or the Rome Club, uh, which is a, a, a collection of eminent uh, uh, scientists in the 1970s uh, who predicted that uh, uh, there would be a second ice age uh, at the beginning of the 21st century, uh, uh, which seems to me is not quite uh, uh, the case. But uh, uh, I, I think that uh, that. Uh, uh, with regard to the future and predictions, uh, 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 the best uh, statement is still uh, that of Yoga Berra's, uh, uh, the famous baseball players, uh, who said that it's very difficult to make any predictions, especially about the future. Uh, so I really, really don't want to make predictions whether the Chinese uh, growth uh, will be uh, going on at such a phenomenal uh, rate. And at the same time, uh, a lot of people warn uh, about uh, uh, the other side of the coin as well. Uh, uh, that is, uh, social uh, and economic problems uh, uh, in China, within China, uh, uh, that uh, might be uh, swept under the carpet for the moment uh, to, to a large extent, uh, but uh, uh, possibly uh, would be a little bit more difficult to handle uh, in the next couple of decades or so. So anyway, uh, the, there's a shift. And uh, clearly, uh, the shift, uh, uh, at least metaphorically, uh, is uh, uh, showing that uh, the Atlantic has given way to the Pacific as the single largest uh, 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 economic uh, zone in the world. Uh, and the Pacific Rim countries uh, are producing uh, uh, at least uh, uh, a, a 
large portion, 40% or 45% of uh, global GDP, and it's growing, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, it has become the largest uh, trading bloc uh, in the world. So, uh, uh, with regard to uh, to uh, the geoeconomics uh, uh, in general, uh, the European Union. Uh, has uh, lost uh, some of its uh, uh, prestige or positions. Uh, the, uh, the loss was uh, complemented by uh, Brexit, uh, because uh, uh, after all, uh, uh, the uh, UK uh, is, I think, uh, the sixth largest economy in the world, uh, possibly the seventh, but you know, uh, 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 it is one of the largest economies in the world. And uh, with uh, Brexit, the European Union uh, has lost, uh, uh, I think, uh, the second strongest economy uh, after Germany. Uh, and, uh, and with all, the, all of its implications, especially uh, with uh, the uh, British attempts to revive uh, a, a kind of a special relationship with the United States, uh, 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 special deals uh, uh, outside of the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the framework of uh, the European Union. Uh, so definitely European Union, despite the fact that uh, still uh, with uh, 450 million people or so, uh, relatively well-to-do, uh, a huge market, uh, and so on. Uh, but uh, but uh, economically speaking, uh, it has lost uh, uh, some of its importance in the eyes of the uh, of the United States. Uh, but again, like to remind you what I said at the beginning of this uh, presentation, uh, that no matter uh, how you approach this issue, uh, uh, the Atlantic community is uh, still uh, uh, the, uh, one of the major uh, uh, players in, uh, in this uh, whole uh, economic uh, trading uh, uh, question. At the same time, uh, I have to add that uh, uh, the positions of the EU uh, in this respect uh, uh, is weakened to a certain extent by the fact that the EU is not absolutely uh, on the same page in every single question. Um, so uh, when you talk about the EU, even if you talk about uh, trade and uh, uh, the uh, USDR is uh, dealing directly with the, uh, with the trade commissioner uh, in Europe, uh, but still you have uh, uh, a number of issues which uh, may split the European Union. Um, and uh, such an issue, for instance, is uh, the GMO issue, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the subsidies uh, of the uh, agriculture products, uh, then, then of course the targeted uh, uh, tariffs uh, uh, like uh, uh, cars uh, or other products. Um, so uh, you, you don't have a unified position uh, in a lot of different cases uh, in the uh, European Union, uh, and, uh, and that weakens the European position uh, uh, in, in terms of the uh, negotiations uh, with uh, uh, the US or, uh, for that matter, with, for example, China. Uh, which is uh, one of the crucial issues here, and uh, and uh, talking about the uh, the American uh, European cooperation on economic issues, um, uh, one of the major problems at the moment is, at least uh, 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 between the uh, the US and uh, the Europeans, is uh, how to handle. Uh, the Chinese economic penetration into Europe, uh, and uh, and of course uh, the uh, the uh, the Americans want uh, uh, to keep the Chinese out of Europe as much as possible, uh, especially uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, of uh, high tech, uh, uh, cyber uh, technology, infrastructure. Uh, so uh, that is why uh, the 5G network, uh, Huawei, uh, or uh, on a small scale, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, Belgrade, Budapest uh, 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 railroad, uh, have been criticized uh, in the US uh, and uh, the Biden administration would like to find a common ground uh, with the European Union uh, to uh, 
to, to show, uh, to present a united front against the Chinese economically as well. Uh, that might be uh, one of the shifts in the uh, American administration uh, or administrations uh, uh, between the Trump administration and the by the administration, the Trump administration preferred bilateral approaches to a lot of different issues. Uh, uh, why the Biden administration uh, would like to solicit uh, uh, European support uh, against uh, Chinese uh, economic uh, uh, expansion as well. Um, so that is uh, the economy. Now, um, the other. Uh, important issue of course is security uh, and here uh, it's not China in the first place uh, but uh, uh, but uh, uh, Russia uh, the latest uh, American threat assessment report by the uh, by the intelligence agencies uh, put uh, uh, or puts uh, uh, China as uh, a peer competitor uh, and Russia only as an irritant. Um, so not a peer competitor, but an irritant. Uh, in other words, uh, we might say that, uh, that China is trying to, uh, to balance the US uh, 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 in all walks of life, um, a very vigorous uh, built up of the uh, Blue uh, Waters uh, Navy uh, and uh, cyber capabilities and so on, uh, while Russia is uh, soft balancing, so to say, uh, that is uh, trying to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to tie down uh, American uh, forces here and there, like in the Middle East, or trying to wedge, uh, uh, trying to drive a wedge between the uh, Europeans and the Americans, or for that matter, between various members of the European Union. So, uh, uh, as far as security is concerned, uh, of course, the uh, big issue was the disappearance of the uh, Soviet Union. And uh, uh, the rise of uh, China, and uh, and here we can link the two. So uh, in fact, we cannot uh, uh, simply talk about the geoeconomics without uh, discussing geo strategy at the same time. Uh, the emerging Chinese challenge economically uh, uh, is also being translated into uh, a challenge militarily as well, uh, like uh, the South China Sea, for example, uh, and as I said, the Chinese military built up uh, uh, very fast. Um, on the other hand, uh, uh, despite the fact that it's very uh, fashionable uh, to talk uh, about Graham Allison's uh, book, uh, uh, Destined to uh, to, uh, to Clash or uh, 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 destined for war, uh, that is the title of uh, his latest book, uh, uh, in which he is talking about uh, the Tukuditen, trap. I'm sorry, I uh, uh, even uh, original uh, Greek, it's, uh, it's a uh, tongue twister. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, uh, and I uh, won't try to, uh, to pronounce this name once again, uh, uh, this uh, uh, ancient historian was writing about the Peloponnesian War. And, uh, and uh, he said that, uh, that uh, uh, Athens was the status quo power and Sparta was the emerging power. And Athens wanted to, uh, uh, to keep uh, Sparta in an inferior position. Uh, so the uh, Peloponnesian War uh, broke out uh, and lasted uh, 431 to 404. Uh, I guess Attila can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, BC, uh, let, me add, let me add that. Uh, and ultimately, uh, uh, Athens was defeated. Uh, so uh, he saw some sort of uh, similar uh, 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 curve uh, uh, in uh, the uh, American-Chinese relationship as well, uh, that the Americans uh, uh, would like to, uh, uh, to slow down uh, the rise of China, uh, like, for, his, for instance, uh, teaming up with uh, the Europeans uh, economically, uh, uh, and also teaming up with a lot of countries uh, militarily, uh, like the Quad, uh, the quadrilateral uh, uh, security cooperation with India, Japan, and Australia. Uh, here, the Europeans uh, 
don't really play uh, any role. Uh, the Europeans are notoriously uh, weak on uh, this uh, so-called power projection capability. Uh, sometimes uh, at uh, different uh, security conferences, uh, the joke is that the Europeans have the power PowerPoint projection capability, uh, but not the power projection capability. Uh, so the, the Europeans don't really play any role here, but the Americans can rely on South Korea, Japan, like the you know, latest uh, uh, summit between the Japanese prime minister and, uh, and President Biden, you know, Australia, India, uh, the Americans are back in Vietnam at Cameron Bay, uh, back in the Philippines, uh, uh, Subic Bay, uh, Clark Air Force Base, uh, uh, and uh, and basically uh, the uh, the Chinese believe that the Americans uh, would like to pursue a neo containment policy vis-à-vis uh, -vis, uh, their country. So. Uh, what uh, resulted uh, in the situation or, or what caused this uh, situation was uh, relatively simple, at least uh, simplified version here. Uh, that is uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union. Europe ceased to be uh, the front line of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, single most important uh, uh, opposition or, or uh, hostility in, during the Cold War. Um, so the uh, the security challenges, both geo uh, geographically and uh, so-called functionally, uh, for the United States, shifted from uh, Europe to uh, other parts of the world, especially uh, to the Indo-Asia uh, Pacific region uh, and also to the Middle East. Uh, so here, the Europeans uh, uh, can have uh, only the uh, the uh, the role of a junior partner uh, uh, especially when the americans and this is uh, what uh, the security cooperation uh, is about at the moment uh, uh, the uh, us administrations no matter whether it's republican or democratic uh, would like to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to force or to press uh, the Europeans uh, uh, to spend more on the military military capabilities and to, to be able to uh, uh, to take a larger share of the burden. Uh, so this is burden sharing issue, and uh, uh, the American expectation is that Europeans should be uh, able to uh, to take care of their backyard first of all, like the Balkans and the neighborhood, uh, the Mediterranean in general. Um, which is a little bit uh, difficult and uh, and a tall order for the Europeans. At least uh, Libya showed that uh, uh, the Europeans uh, uh, had to rely on uh, American support uh, after a week or so, uh, because simply they had run out of uh, uh, precision guided munitions, uh, didn't have uh, uh, the precision tar targeting uh, 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 equipment uh, uh, and so on. Again, against Libya, which was uh, you know, uh, 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 a very weak uh, uh, country uh, from the military point of view, uh, despite all the bragging uh, at the time by Colonel Gaddafi. Uh, so uh, the uh, security cooperation right now is a, bit, a little bit lopsided uh, and uh, has become even more lopsided than before. Uh, uh, the Americans' uh, recurrent complaint is uh, that the uh, uh, that the Europeans uh, uh, don't really make uh, any extra effort to uh, uh, to uh, uh, to contribute to the common defense uh, and uh, and the uh, the uh, original scene, so to say, was uh, uh, the so-called uh, uh, peace dividend uh, uh, in the early 1990s. Yeah, uh, where uh, European countries uh, started to uh, to cut the defense spending uh, uh, dramatically, um, and uh, and uh, it uh, resulted in in the in the fact that uh, uh, in the uh, 2000s uh, uh, only uh, four uh, countries uh, met the two percent uh, uh, defense spending requirement uh, in terms of GDP. Uh, and uh, uh, that is, uh, I think it was Britain, uh, Greece, uh, uh, Estonia, uh, and uh, possibly Turkey, uh, besides the United States. 
Uh, and the real problem is uh, not Estonia, of course, uh, uh, but Germany. Uh, and, uh, and here, when you talk about security issues, uh, I'd like to expand uh, the notion or the, uh, or this, uh, or the security, uh, uh, the scope of security, uh, uh, because uh, in the 1990s, the agenda, the security agenda was expanded enormously. Uh, including uh, uh, food security, water security, uh, migration, uh, everything, uh, and energy security is one of them. Uh, and uh, here, uh, the, the big issue at the moment is, uh, of course, the, the German position on uh, uh, energy security, uh, which is clashing again with uh, American uh, positions. Uh, uh, no matter whether uh, you took a Republican or Democratic uh, administrations, um, that is Nord Stream 2. Uh, Nord Stream 2 uh, uh, has been vehemently opposed by the United States and the Germans uh, uh, as vehemently uh, protect or defend uh, 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 Nord Stream 2. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, one of the, uh, the consequences of the collapse of the Soviet Union was uh, some sort of uh, a decoupling or uh, a decoupling of European and American security. Um, so uh, during the Cold War, they were on the same page, uh, almost 100%. Of course, there were differences, but the Europeans you know, swallowed hard. Uh, for instance, during the 1980s, uh, uh, the deployment of uh, uh, Pershing twos and uh, and cruise missiles in Germany uh, and so on. But you know. Um, uh, they, uh, uh, after all, yielded to the uh, to American demands. But uh, um, after the uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, it's, it's as if it's the Germans uh, who found uh, their voice, so to say, uh, in a number of matters. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, during uh, the Iraqi War, when the French and the Germans and the Russians uh, uh, joined into an axis of sorts uh, in 2002-2003, opposing the Iraqi war. Uh, and right now, uh, in this uh, uh, very important uh, uh, security question, uh, the Germans are uh, clearly uh, uh, opposing American uh, intentions. The uh, American strategy here would be uh, ultimately to uh, weaken Russian positions. So. Um, uh, energy is uh, weaponized uh, or has been weaponized by the Putin uh, uh, administration uh, and Gazprom clearly is uh, uh, a political arm of, uh, uh, of the Kremlin. Uh, so uh, to make Europe uh, and Germany uh, the single most important country even more dependent on uh, and more one-sidedly dependent on uh, energy supply from Russia uh, would be having its uh, political consequences as well. So uh, uh, I really don't want to uh, beat around the bush. Uh, uh, the Germans uh, would be more uh, so-called understanding uh, with regard to certain policies. And uh, in order to broaden this uh, whole issue, uh, I'd like to uh, remind you of uh, Radek Sikorsky, uh, the former Polish uh, foreign minister, uh, who uh, talked about the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact with regard to the first uh, uh, Nord Stream uh, pipeline. Uh, so uh, for uh, a number of people in the United States, uh, the specter uh, of a two intimate uh, German-Russian uh, uh, relationship a rapprochement uh, between the two uh, is not a welcome development. So uh, clearly, uh, the uh, the long-term broader issue is uh, to try to prevent uh, uh, the Germans from getting too close to the uh, Russians and to be too understanding. And uh, uh, I think that uh, at the bottom of this whole issue is uh, this uh, the uh, the uh, the. Uh, uh, kind of foreboding uh, that the uh, Germans uh, would be uh, more understanding uh, and with all of its, uh, its uh, consequences later on. Uh, so uh, the security challenges uh, with, with regard to the security, uh, the Europeans are not so 
uh, helpful in a lot of different cases uh, and haven't been so helpful, by the way, uh, in, the, uh, in the past couple of uh, years. Um, uh, despite the fact that the, uh, the uh, uh, Europeans uh, uh, wanted to demonstrate their uh, their uh, support of the Americans, like in in uh, in uh, um, Afghanistan, for example, sending troops and so on, uh, but uh, ISAF uh, uh, and the, the uh, real abbreviation of ISAF was uh, I saw Americans fight. Uh, so the Europeans were busy uh, getting to the. Uh, 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 more peaceful uh, provinces of uh, Afghanistan, uh, trying to uh, to avoid uh, 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 the dreaded uh, 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 body uh, uh, sex or body bags, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, as they said, the Americans were doing the uh, cooking and the Americans were doing the washing up. Uh, so uh, there's a debate, by the way, in this uh, respect between the U.S. and the and the uh, Europeans, because the Europeans say that uh, uh, that uh, their uh, contribution to international security is uh, as uh, precious and valuable as the Americans, because uh, the EU is the single largest uh, uh, aid country in the world. So, uh, uh, or, or the EU is contributing uh, about 50% of all the economic and humanitarian aid in the world. So they say that. Uh, this is part of the whole uh, broader uh, security agenda. So it's not like just uh, sending in the, uh, in the 82nd Airborne Division, but sending in uh, engineers, uh, building bridges, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, creating uh, canals, uh, you know, uh, uh, clean water, uh, irrigation, you know, whatever. So. Uh, 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 this is also about security, but uh, as far as hard security is concerned, the Europeans are not really a partner for the, uh, for the United States and won't be uh, a partner. Uh, so um, I may predict it, uh, at least in the uh, near and medium term. Uh, the Germans are not really willing to increase uh, defense spending. And uh, even if uh, Hungary is uh, increasing defense spending to 2%, um, you know, adding uh, a dozen uh, new uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, helicopter gunships and so on uh, wouldn't make uh, that big a difference. Uh, 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 if the Germans uh, uh, don't make any extra efforts to increase their defense spending from 1.2% or so to 2%, uh, which is, uh, in terms of uh, real money, uh, uh, tens of billions of uh, euros per year, uh, then uh, the uh, European capability uh, would be only secondary. Another problem, by the way, is that uh, Europe, the defense industry is very uh, disorganized. Uh, 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 as opposed to the uh, to the American uh, one, um, and uh, and uh, uh, you may have heard of the Eurofighter, uh, which is nicknamed as the Bureau Fighter. So you know, uh, every single uh, uh, part uh, of uh, the uh, Eurofighter is produced uh, somewhere uh, because of this uh, sort of. Uh, 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 care, very careful distribution of resources uh, uh, from Spain to Italy to uh, to the Netherlands to uh, uh, to Norway to uh, France to Germany to England. Uh, you know, everyone is contributing, and then uh, you have uh, a, a, a Eurofighter, which is exceptionally in, in, uh, expensive, uh, which may be quite good, but uh, uh, can't really compete uh, globally uh, uh, with uh, American uh, or uh, even the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Soviet uh, 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 weapons of this uh, or platforms of this kind. Now, so that is uh, the security uh, side of the, uh, of the uh, Atlantic community. Uh, and uh, uh, the last uh, and, uh, and really uh, uh, quite short, uh, uh, part will be uh, the geopolitical uh, uh, issue. Uh, here, uh, Barack Obama uh, dropped the bombshell uh, together with Hillary Clinton with his pivot to Asia, 
uh, or rebalance to Asia, that is uh, a more a polite name. Uh, uh, so Europeans uh, uh, started to complain that uh, the Americans uh, were turning their back to the Europeans. In fact, uh, um, we can see uh, that uh, yeah, perhaps uh, uh, the last quote unquote European president uh, was uh, George W. Bush, the younger Bush. So uh, Obama didn't really care too much about Europe, uh, uh, to be honest. Uh, uh, Trump uh, didn't either. Uh, Biden promises uh, to uh, to be back, but uh, uh, you know it's too early to say uh, whether it, uh, it was uh, simply uh, a campaign rhetoric uh, or uh, or uh, any real promise. Uh, at least uh, there is some shift. For example, uh, uh, Biden uh, isn't uh, uh, redeploying troops from Germany uh, to Poland or to some of the places. But uh, now I can't really see uh, uh, any major shift in uh, resources. And uh, with regard to this rebalance or uh, or pivot. Uh, previously, the, uh, with regard to the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, uh, as for the U.S. Navy, it was 50 for 50, 50 percent. Uh, right now, it is 60 percent Pacific, 40 percent Atlantic. Um, so more assets have been diverted to the Pacific uh, than to the Atlantic. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, as I said earlier, uh, it's a little bit difficult to see how the uh, uh, the Europeans uh, uh, will be able to fill in uh, this uh, gap uh, in capability. Um, I think that uh, it should be uh, uh, should be uh, 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 reorganized uh, and integrated. Uh, uh, because otherwise uh, uh, the uh, the European Union uh, will be left behind uh, uh, in this uh, global uh, uh, contest. Uh, and uh, uh, returning to the uh, original statement, uh, uh, geoeconomics, as uh, uh, as uh, uh, Uber Alice, uh, in fact, is not. So uh, uh, we can see a return of geopolitics. Uh, uh, we can see a return of uh, uh, balance of power politics. Uh, you know, Russia, uh, China are uh, clearly uh, pursuing uh, this classic uh, real politic uh, uh, that is a modern approach to uh, international affairs. Uh, and uh, both of them uh, uh, would like to democratize international relations. Uh, which is quite an interesting proposition. Uh, 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 what they mean is uh, to redistribute uh, uh, political, uh, economic, uh, and uh, and other assets from the west to uh, uh, to the east and uh, to the south or so. So um, my conclusion is that uh, the uh, American European relations are still strong. Uh, uh, but uh, there are signs that uh, that the European Union uh, and Europe in general uh, is not so important for the United States as it used to be. Uh, and uh, if you look at the map, uh, uh, and uh, if you say that uh, geopolitics has returned, uh, Europe uh, is just a peninsula, a tiny peninsula uh, on the Eurasian uh, 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 heartland. Uh, so uh, uh, if uh, uh, it uh, isn't able to pull itself together, I think that uh, uh, it will be uh, left behind and uh, would be, uh, I don't want to say a playground, but uh, would be uh, a political entity which uh, won't be able to compete uh, on equal terms uh, with the uh, Chinese and the Americans uh, uh, in the global context. So thank you very much. I guess that uh, I'm uh, was keeping myself within uh, the uh, uh, the 40 minutes uh, we agreed on. And uh, um, I, first of all, like to thank you for uh, uh, for listening to me.